Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was much younger and had small children, I remember the first time we took our first child out. I think I had maybe two or three diaper bags because they were gifted to us and I thought, well, if someone gave them to me, I should fill them with something that I might need. Uh, so I had two of those on the shoulders. Uh, of course, you had probably 50 diapers with you just in case that would uh, be needed. Uh, and sometimes you would have all of this stuff and realize, oh, I have to make room for the baby. <laughs> uh, by the fifth one, much later, I realized if I just took one extra diaper, I'd be okay. And I think that is wisdom that we gain through our lives on everything. It's called investing in what's important. And I know that's really scary when it's Stewardship Sunday, is she gonna talk about money? <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> but it's not the way you think of it. I'm gonna talk about our talents, our time, where our heart is. And it's called investing in the surprise. If you look at the third verse of Morning Cry that's in your bulletin, the very ending is the most beautiful sentence. It's there, I will be there for one more surprise. I have always loved that line because I thought, have I missed all the surprises up to this moment? What am I missing? And I love to sing that song, and, and it probably makes people cry because it is such a beautiful song about what God is giving to us. And it's especially beautiful on days when we baptize babies. It is that investment in the surprise. Investing has kind of a different word, a, a feeling in the days and times when I was uh, much younger and in my teaching, it was pretty normal for people to come into the school and say, we need you to think about how you're going to invest for your retirement. And I realized it, it might have been just like the morning that I had this morning where I only got one cup of coffee and I'm thinking, you want me to invest in my retirement? I'm just trying to make it through the first period of the day. So I'm not really sure what I have to offer you today. And my principal was, just the wisest person ever. And he looked at me and he goes, don't ever worry about investing money. If you do that, you will have the most unhappiest life there would ever be. He goes, you have today. And you have this opportunity to meet, and I would teach about 100 children every day, being a music teacher, that was the blessing of it all. You have that opportunity to invest the best of yourself into all those children that walk into your classroom. And if you do that every day of your life, you will have the best retirement you could ever imagine. Those were the wisest words I ever heard. Invest your time today. Invest your talents today with whatever comes in front of you. I have lived my life trying to keep that focus, but oh my goodness, it is hard when there are so many things that feed into this. And so I have rules that I follow. I always like to have those guidelines. I'm a list maker. I put things on my uh, bathroom mirror, so when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm also uh, using that time to refocus, to also clean my mind the way God cleans our, our bodies every day when we confess our sins. Take time to have that focus in your life, to remember why and who you are. Be attentive to everything that pulls you away from that identity. And when you don't know how to find your way back to that identity, go find some way to be grateful. And when you are grateful, you see God. That is the best way to wake up every morning and to realize that everything that you do is because God first gave you this gift of life and that leads you to opportunities that you will never dream of.
because God has so much more in mind for us of creating the identity we are to becoming who God created us to be. And it's a surprise. <laughs> I love living in these surprises now. It doesn't always lead you to better things. Sometimes these surprises in your life lead you to those really hard, difficult moments. But it always leads you right to God. So when we are talking today about this very difficult parable of Matthew, about the ten bridesmaids, the five that were wise, the five that weren't wise, the whole thing is centered around nobody knows when the bridegroom is going to show up. And so what are you going to be doing during that time? Where is your focus? Is it going to be thinking I don't have enough? Or that I have more than enough and I can always share? The identity we are called to is to be God's children every day of, the li of our lives. Every moment of our lives. And what does that look like? It looks exactly like what you did this morning. We came in. We stood together and we confessed our sin. We emptied ourselves out from anything that caused us to stray away from Christ. <clears throat> Confession is good for the soul because it, it makes us realize that we do fail. We miss the mark. It's so easy to be judgmental and to sin and do what we don't want to do, even though we know God and we know what he wants us to do. This is the most beautiful thing about the baptism font. Forever and ever, that seal that marks you with that anointing oil that gives you absolutely everything you need throughout your life, it takes you everywhere you need to be in every holy moment. You are the empty vessel of grace that roams this world and has the ability to make it shine. I love that idea of that oil that makes us shine, that vessel of grace of, of who we are and that God initiates everything. God plants that seed into your minds on Sunday mornings. We should go to church. We should turn it on on Facebook. We should turn on the radio. We should look at all of the people who are gathered here today worshiping with us and keep them in our prayers all week. And we hope they keep us in our prayers all week so that we can be stronger. Because the invitation is for all. The invitation is for every person God created. Now when I talked, I said I was going to talk about investments. It's not our investments that I want to talk about. It's who God invested in. <coughs> God has invested in us 100% unchanging promises the value of salvation, eternal life. If you look at the third article of the Apostles' Creed that we speak and believe every single Sunday, we confess it in front of each other, that the gifts that God gives us are 100% of himself. The gift of the Holy Spirit to be our provider, sustainer. When you walk into those moments that you don't know what's going on, Take a breath. It's a reminder that God is already inside us dwelling, and he will give us everything we need to go through it. The universal church, the holy Catholic church, we have people all across the entire world, all time and space. We are all connected in that communion of saints. You talk about networking. God had the best one designed for us. We are never separated from each other, and a prayer to God goes everywhere across this world in all time and space. And just think about it, somewhere someone's praying for you right now. Have you ever stopped to think how holy that moment is? The fact that our God fills us with that restoration of water, gives us the bread and the cup, the sacrament to come and hold 
his real presence in our hand as we come forward to take that holy meal that he gave his entire self, came to earth for us so that we could be like him, to understand what it's like to live in this world like Jesus, to live in the surprise of the upside down kingdom of what it means to love one another without hate. Wouldn't that be a surprise this week if we all could walk through this world? And you know what? We have the power given to us. Sometimes we just don't think we can do it. The Holy Spirit gives us absolutely everything we need. And if you say, Lord, lead me to these people that I'm not sure if I love and show me how to love them. And God will prevail. Because forever and ever, that is the message. 100% of God is invested in you. And what God wants is a moment of your time. A moment of who you are. Because he created you to be able to shine that light, gave you enough oil that you don't have to worry about where I'm going to go find it. It's right here. And all you have to say to God is, I need a little more. And it just pours grace over you, over and over. And you cannot outgive God. The more that you give, the more you will receive. And so how perfectly the timing of the parable of the bridesmaids. While we wait for the bridegroom to show up, we are in the presence of Christ right here. And he's looking at us and he goes, I'm praying that you will be who I created you to be. To be that person that smiles at one that needs to see it. To be the people that create a spot where people can know that they are safe and loved and come in to worship me and know me more. How perfect that it is on our Stewardship Sunday that that is the message. It's called being aware, preparing, and sharing for these holy moments. What do we have to do? Open our eyes and our minds. The way we live our lives in Christ is the reason we do call this Stewardship Sunday or consecration. And consecration is a big church word that I never understood until I had to always look it up in the dictionary and I don't know why we do that to each other, but consecration means you're sanctified. <laughs> well, did that help? <laughs> it means you're made holy in Christ. He looks at you and he goes, you have potential. You have the potential to shine my light every moment of your day. You are holy. Now you cannot be holy without Christ. And that is why it is such a pleasure such a privilege to be a pastor here because when I talk with Linda Bean on stewardship and she is a very dedicated leader and I'm so thankful for you Linda we never talk about money never we never talk about let's sign up how much you want to give to the church that is not the mission that Linda leads she always brings to the table what have you seen? Where do we have to go? Who needs God? And those meetings are the most God-present meetings I am at. And so it is a joy today, Linda, that we get to kind of share this sermon topic. Uh, and she is fired up. And I mean fired up with these holy moments. And I love it when people come in with passion. And she does. And I love to argue with her. I said, Linda, really? You really want to do that? And when she says, yes, you know her heart is in it. And I have gained so much from these things. That's what it's called, building each other. And it's not really arguing. I don't want to make it like that. It's like, what? <laughs> and then beautiful moments. So Linda. Today, as we celebrate stewardship, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I would like your testimony of what stewardship is that you can share with everyone. First, is it in the Bible? It, stewardship. Why, of course it is. Yes. From Sunday school, we learned 
<clears throat> that we love because God first loved us. Remember the song? And after that, very shortly, we learned that we give because God gives to us everything. God is love. And as his children, we gratefully receive God's love and his gifts, and then we are called to pass this, these on. And we do this by following Jesus' life among us and his uh, directions to us. God knows our hearts. We seek to fulfill Matthew 25, verses 35 through 40, where he tells us that when we feed the hungry, invite in strangers, provide shelter and clothing for those in need, and care for sick and vulnerable people among us, we are actually doing it for him. Good Hope Lutheran Church is committed to Jesus' calling for us to feed and care for my sheep and lambs. We want to glorify God in every, every area of our lives by reflecting God's love and light to all. And so, to be aware of who we are, called by God to be his children, to be prepared, emptied of all of the worldly things and filled with grace, and to be transformed into knowing that we always have enough to share, to put God first and to love others as Jesus loves us. This is sharing the love of Christ through our times, talents, and treasures. And I have to add this, Linda, I was at the musical Les Mis, of course, if you don't know, <laughs> I had a life of being a music teacher before here, and it is my favorite musical. But the ending line is this, and I thought how timely on a stewardship weekend, to love another person is to see the face of God. Mm -hmm. That is transforming. Wow, sounds like it could be the beginning of some holy moments. 1 Peter 1 verses 13 through 16 reads, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Exactly. <laughs> living in Christ, living sanctified in the abundance of Christ, made holy through our baptism, Christ leads us to these opportunities of these holy moments. The foundation <laughs> of our relationship with, we have with Christ is found in Matthew 22. Jesus answers the question he is asked, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We are called to live like Christ, collaborating with Christ in our lives. On the website, think divinely, this statement is there, it's beautiful. God is omnipresent, ever present, and you need to simply stop the rush, focus your thoughts on this truth that Emmanuel God is with us right now. So in this very breath, this thought, this ever present presence, it is a holy moment. Set apart from the world to recognize God, our creator, the one who designed us, loves us, and wants us to live forever with him as part of his holy family in an everlasting holy moment. So this is what you must do. Set apart a moment in your day to find God in your now. He is here in the present with you. Jesus is within and among us. This year we've been focused on the story of Jesus in the Gospels and on our Bible memory verse. Remember Acts 1.8 but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, even to Bucyrus, Ohio. <laughs> Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times, 
and use words if necessary. This means we are to be prepared to participate with the Holy Spirit when we are called to opportunities to experience and encounter holy moments with him and with others. As we prepare for these holy moments, we re need to remember that God is full of surprises and is always ahead of us. In Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 19, we read, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Linda, this is the one thing that I have enjoyed working on stewardship with you, is that when we dream, we try to imagine, and if you all would do this, how far can we stretch our arms for others to know that we love them. Remember that fruit grows from seeds planted. Every collaboration with God yields unimaginable fruit. In Galatians 5, 22 through 23, Paul tells us, remember this, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Then in verse 25, he says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So let us continue to sow holy moments wherever we go. Well, this is exciting because if we could all just take a moment and think beyond our comfort zone how far we could go, how many surprises we could bring to this world through the love of Christ. It's transformation. That if we could live every day, every moment in a holy moment. Mm -hmm. Our God is an awesome God. We simply cannot outgive him. The Stewardship Committee has a book for each of you, and it's called Holy Moments, whoops, um, a handbook for the rest of your life. I hope you're curious. We're going to give each one of you um, one, and we want you to please read it. Read it again, and then be inspired. I promise you will. We hope you will take the challenge, pass it on, and then we hope you will share your stories with us and with each other, because you will have them. We thank you, each and every one, for all the ways you have shared your lives, your joys, and your sorrows in this body of Christ at Good Hope in the past year and many years. We thank you for all the ways you give and serve our Lord. You are invited to the auditorium after the service to share some fellowship and some fun holy donuts and fruits of the spirit cup. Um, and the best way to thank you is to show you some of the many holy moments of stewardship and love that we have experienced together in the past year. They will know that we are Christians by our love. The Messiah is among us. Enjoy this presentation put together by our community engagement minister, Lauren Atkins. <laughs>
hopefully you saw yourself in some of those or felt that, oh boy, I want to be a part of that. Let us rejoice and sing Morning Cry together as we praise God for the gifts he gives. Congregation may be seated. Oh, we're going to wake her up. <laughs> oh, what a joy this is. You can follow along in your hymnal. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son and daughter baptized into Christ? As you bring Tate Stone and Ella Michelle to receive the gifts of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. To live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that Tate and Ella may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Tate Stone and Ella Michelle grow in the Christian faith and life? People of God, do you promise to, to support Tate Stone and Ella Michelle and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? And this is all the sponsors and parents. 
Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? As the congregation, please stand and profess your faith with us. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Take first. Can I get your hair back? Tate Stone, I baptize you in the name of the Father, whoops, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Whoops, we really got you wet there. <laughs> there, and dry up. <clears throat> You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Ella Michelle, did I say that right? Okay. Ella Michelle, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Tate Stone and Ella Michelle with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Tate Stone, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Bella Michelle, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we give you these candles. This is the Paschal candle that only lights in the life of the church when people are baptized and when they enter life eternal. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine before others that you may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. 
we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Welcome to the family. And uh, we will, you may extinguish your light and pass them back to all of your sponsors who will help you carry. And we will introduce these new uh, children of God to you as uh, we sing this, we hear this beautiful solo, Make This Child Yours. Welcome to Christ. Take these children, make them yours, make them part of your family. From your love they have come, in your love may they always be. Let not time nor age take them far from your family. May they grow, may they stay close to you. To you, dear Lord, we praise thee for the blessings of your perfect gift. To you, dear Lord, our heartfelt thanks, we raise their voice and praise. Take these children, make them yours, make them part of your family. From your love they have come, in your love may they always be. Let not time nor age take them far from your family. May they grow, May they stay close to you. Today, so hear this benediction and blessing forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with prayers. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people. Bring your salvation and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. O oh God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. O oh God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community that they are supported and loved. O oh God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger, support the under or unemployed, and comfort any who are suffering this day, especially Marge Bodenot, Heidi Walton, Ruth Lady Pollock, 
Bob Norris, Keith Young, Jan Newell, Bruce Sloan, Eric Sparks, Rick Nodell, Sydney, Brad Bradford, Larry Shetler, Ed Wirtz, Pat Caldwell, Charles, Nyla, Brad Jordan. O oh God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. O oh God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. We ask for prayers for the family and friends of Jeff Tarbert, nephew of Deb and Larry Tackett, and please pray for the family and friends of Lowell Everts. Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. We bring to you moments of celebration for Michael and Emily Powers as they were joined in marriage yesterday here at Good Hope. Lord, we ask for the blessing on their lives. And Lord, we give thanksgiving and praise to you for Ella and Tate today as they are baptized children of you. Welcome into your fold. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ and Savior our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord.
me. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone is welcome at our table. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table.
stand next to you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in his grace. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as you meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. I have a couple of announcements. I'm doing the birthdays first, so I do not forget them. Kyle Pope is now a teenager, and so we really do need to sing strong on that. And Lane Weber uh, had a birthday this past Thursday and turned nine. So it is to Kyle and to Lane. Happy birthday. I want to thank all of the ones that serve on our stewardship committee, especially Linda as our leader. Uh, you will not want to miss the holy donuts, and they are holy because they are delicious and filled with only the goodness that God gives, and uh, also fruits of the Spirit. We thank you for that. Join us in the auditorium, and tomorrow, if you still have food that you want to uh, send out into the community, we will have, it's a morning matin worship. It's a beautiful worship service that we do in the mornings. We'll be in the chapel at 930, and then we invite anyone who would be willing to help carry all of that food. Oh my goodness, what a blessing it is. We have to deliver it to our food bank. So we could use some muscle, some trucks, some, um, some joy. It is like just the best thing ever to deliver that. So if you would like to experience that, join us. 9.30 in the chapel, we praise God and then we do the work. So um, any other announcements that I may have missed? All right. Not that Al Wood is a college-age person, <laughs> but Al Wood is telling you college-age people, you should read that holy moments. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Al Wood. Uh, so here, the blessing. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protect you. The presence of God watch over you. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with the purpose so that others may gain the kingdom. We sing Blessed Assurance.
Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.